Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Whatnots Review Show, our weekly book club style podcast here at the Whatnots. We cover all sorts of different genres and mediums, so there is bound to be something you will like and you can check out and all sorts of stuff like that. We cover comics and movies and TV shows. Uh, today uh, is number 139, and we are going to be doing something that really only happens every once in a blue moon on the podcast. <laughs> We're going to be doing a compare and contrast uh, mm. on Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, we're, we're both going to be talking about the comic book v- version and the animated adaption. Uh, so we will get to discussing that in just a sec. For now, my name is Kyle Spur- Spurringer, and I am joined, as always, by Melissa Wilkinson. Yep. Melissa, what's going on? Happy New Year's. <laughs> I, 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 I guess this isn't the first one of the New Year's no, for the it's, show. We it is not. We did the James Bond one, but... This is our third recording of the new year, but we can still be happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my (laughs) is it my fourth one? I I did. Yeah, my Mm. fourth one, because we spent all last night doing our game of the year podcast on crossplay. Can you Uh, tell me what yours was? I won't understand. Congratulations to Miles Morales. Oh, Spider-Man that makes Miles sense. Morales that got the uh, the stamp of approval from the the whatnots. So that is a video you know, game a low, I am aware of. of. Don't know a lot about yeah. video <laughs> games. Know a moderate amount about Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it was good. It was fun. How was your weekend, Ben? Though, what have you been up to? I made some nachos yesterday. <laughs> That's good. That works. Yeah. I don't know. That's been the centerpiece nachos of the weekend. Classic. They made nachos, had a margarita. Jack and I watched Book Smart. I hadn't seen it yet. It's such a fun time. You dig it, and it's very easily available on your local Hulu. <laughs> Mm hmm. It was. Yeah, I was very impressed. Oh. Oh, no, oh, that's bad. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I like woke up and then hit the alarm off and it, I just went right back to sleep and all of that stuff. And it was just, anyways, here I am (laughs) having fun. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Gotham by Gaslight, which I'm excited to talk about here. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up this stuff. We got the comic book, which was written by Brian Augustine with art by Mike Mignola. Mm-hmm. You guys know him from Hell Boy. Uh, that's where you might recognize his name there. Uh, and then the animated adaption, the animated movie directed and produced by Sam Leu, uh with the screenplay by Jim Krieg. There you go. Mm-hmm. How old is yeah. Gotham by Gaslight? My mom was asking me if this was one of the older Batman titles, and I'm like, it's an Elseworlds, so I'm not really able to place it in canon. I don't know when this was published. Uh, so I guess the original story came out in February 1989. Oh, okay. It is a bit old. Well, it's older than I am. Yeah, and th- so the comic uh which is available on comiXology unlimited uh the edition that they have available in comiXology unlimited has the gotham by gaslight story which is really only like 50 pages 
but it's collected with uh, another story, which I g- g- is basically a sequel. Uh, it's another like 50 page short yeah. story called Batman Master of the Future. Um, and it's that's written by this same guy, Brian a- a- Augustine, uh, with art by Eduardo Bar- Barreto. Um, but that the stuff from that story did not make it into the animated adaption, really. Some of there it were does. Maybe a few the, things, but yeah, the for animated the most version part, is. Yeah. It takes some of the set pieces from that second story and like lays the first story over it. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, that s- second one came out in 1991, and then the oh, movie. Okay was looks like it was released in january 2018 so fairly new for the yeah three years old um yeah yeah you guys can go check out the animated adaption on hbo or on, on on hbo max yeah i should say since we just got access to that streaming service or at least i did there you go Good stuff. That's where you can watch all of that stuff. So yeah, Gotham by Gaslight. In mm-hmm. general, what did you think? I enjoyed this. I started with the movie and then I read the graphic novel. Interesting. And I did the I was re- re- <laughs> That's how my schedule worked out. Like I had a, a time window for which I could watch a movie before I had one for which I could sit down with the whole graphic novel. But also I don't like to get caught in that comparison trap where I've set myself up to perhaps favor a book over a movie. Movie adaptations get enough of a bad rap. I don't want to put myself in a situation where I could add to that. So I typically do watch a movie first. And I did enjoy the movie a lot more than the graphic novel. (laughs) I think it, it expanded on and streamlined the material in the graphic novel for a a more exciting narrative for me personally. (laughs) Interesting. I, actually disagree with most of that i think it's oh dear oh no so not not in a bad way because i i think both were were good and i I think some of what you said i actually do agree with but yeah i i i I don't necessarily want to read the like book first or stuff like that i want to read the source material first mm-hmm. and sometimes out, out out there you'll find oh they made a movie and then they adapted it to a comic and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. um but yeah i wanted to see like what was the original idea like what 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 were they working with that then they expanded on and stuff like that and i i think both have their merits um mm-hmm. I, I did still enjoy the comics quite a bit yeah, I I think I liked the comic more, and we'll get into why. Um, but I I think as maybe a whole meal, yeah, the movie <laughs> is. It, I mean, it it just has more, more stuff since the comic is only like fifty pages, which is yeah, like two issues. If if you yes. you know if you t- t- take your a- 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 average size comic. Um, so it, it, there's not much to it, but they add things and change things in the movie. And so some of it I thought was like, oh, that's 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 neat. That's nice. And like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. They would have to, you know, fail stuff out. But uh, in in the end, I, I thought the comic, since there was l- 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 less of it, streamlined mm-hmm. that stuff as you, 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 you use that word. It was just a much simpler idea. I feel like, um, but regardless, I liked them both. Uh Uh-huh. I'm glad I finally got to this story because it's the story I've been hearing about for a long time. Uh, And there was a period in college where I'm like, I'm going to try and learn more about comics. And there's so much of Batman that is this, uh, it's got a lot of important one shots that you can pull out and read. Like I read Dark Knight Returns and the killing joke and batman year one like Mm -hmm. batman is this massive massive world but it has a number of like standout shorter series and graphic novels like that so i got to those but i didn't get to gotham by gaslight and i was glad to check that off my list 
Yeah. Yeah, it's Bat- Batman has this like legendary status, right? Yes. Where he's very e- easy to just make up a story and be like, yeah. There was this one time that <laughs> blah, 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 you, you know. Yeah, um, he's like a folk hero. You can make your own story about whatever Batman needs to do right. for yourself. Right. Whereas like Spider-Man, not as easy to do that. You can. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not I'm not saying it's not possible and like you can't just be like, yes. well, there was this one time that Spider, you know, like it just. There's something about Batman. Batman that he has this like mystery around him and this right, legendary like, status. Yeah, you don't know everything he's ever gotten up to. Uh he may have started his career as Batman when he was fairly young, but many Batman stories portray him as being like in his Older. 40s or something. Like he's got yeah. a large chunk of his career in the way like a Spider-Man does it. Spider-Man's like 24 at the most. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how old a Spider-Man gets in the typical Spider-Man continuity. In the comics, I'd say he's maybe more like early to mid thirties. Oh boy. Okay. So we're but we're right yes. at about approaching Spider-Man age. Yeah, but but yeah, I, I think most early Spider-Man stuff is like end of high school, middle of college. <laughs> Right, like right around there, like maybe yeah, just hard. out of college, you don't, you, yeah. you know, somewhere maybe harder to there. stick a, a wild legend into that framework. <laughs> right. Batman, you know, Batman also has like no structure to his life. You know, he, he doesn't have a graduation. <laughs> he doesn't have a college. You know, maybe he works like daily at Wayne Industries. Maybe he doesn't. He could be doing he anything at any every time now and then. for like 30 straight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, it's not like, but once upon a time, Spider-Man was in math class. <laughs> Let me tell you about this one particular day in math class. Yeah, a less uh, thrilling place to start a story right. than anywhere Bruce Wayne could be. Yeah. Uh, so this, I, I don't think we've covered anything Batman before on the review show. N- not solely Batman. He's appeared in other things that we've done. We've right. covered two Superman titles. We've covered, I think, assorted other little bits of the DC universe. But no, there have been several times you've pitched me a Batman story, and I've just never felt like that's the Batman story to cover until you pitched right. this one. Yeah. This is, uh, it's, it's an interesting one to start with. I... Uh, I, I I don't know. Would I recommend this to someone who's never read a Batman story or something before? You know, I I I'm I might. It, it's uh, it's yeah. good. I, I think I think the c- comic at least I, I, the movie I don't know because it adds in a bunch of references to other characters. And see, I see that's what I like about the movie because it has this I, alternate like Catwoman, alternate Poison Ivy, like it pulls on the things that like the average just lay person who doesn't really know Batman recognizes from the general pop culture appearances of Batman. Yeah, I I mean, I I like m- most of that, but I think to appreciate that and what they uh-huh. did to change those c- characters, I feel like you need to know them first of just like who they are, whereas the comic doesn't really have that and it's just batman and it's just jack the ripper and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so um speaking of jack the ripper let's uh rip into our uh synopsis of gotham by gaslight so let's see this follows a young batman or at least the so the the comic version follows a young batman it's not exactly clear how much he's been batman it looks like he's had the costume for a while but hasn't really taken it out much but he's out in london studying with freud Mm. Um, and uh he is making his way back to gotham uh and and Basically, as soon as he gets there, he finds out that uh, there uh, there has been a murder and it seems to be oddly reminiscent of Jack the Ripper. Mm. They're, and they're all like, huh, that's strange. Uh, and then <laughs> the murders continue and then they're like, "Uh oh, this is not good. 
uh, and Batman dons his cape and cowl and actually is Batman. I I, I just keep referring to him as Batman. Like yeah. I'm sure he <laughs> refers to him, himself, right? <laughs> um, right. We all know. I'm Batman. Uh, but uh yeah, he so he he tries going out there and doing Batman things to solve this case, but ends up being framed for these killings. So it's kind of Batman's race to solve these murders and find out who Jack the Ripper I- I- is, because that's who it is. It's Jack the mm. Ripper. It's not a copycat and stuff like that. In the movie. It's the same basic premise. Um, Batman ha- never went to London, though. He's just still chilling here. And well, I, he may have been back because when he appeared, they were like, oh, he's back. Yeah. The Gotham's favorite son. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's just back in Gotham. And yes, someone who appears to be Jack the Ripper is now plaguing the streets of Gotham. Um and they are trying to solve the murder mysteries of who this is. And again, in the movie, kind of ends up being framed, but in a different way in the yeah. m- movie. Um, and so, yeah, it's a race against the cl- clock to figure it out. Stuff like that. I Do you want to add a- a- anything else? It's basically Batman versus Jack. Yeah. The Ripper. Yeah, yeah, it's a Victorian era Batman. <laughs> yeah, it's, it takes p- place in like the late eighteen hundreds. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess, yeah, th- uh, this is an what uh, DC Comics often refers to as an else world story, which just means it's an alternate reality. Yeah, that's it. Good, good fun. This book is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, for I'm being a murder I mystery, a very moody murder mystery about Jack the Ripper. You could call it fun. It, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's fun for me to see because, yeah. yeah, it is this like short, quick story you can read mm. or a short movie you can watch. It's an interesting take, right, where it's just like, what if? Jack the Ripper, after he did all his murders in London, went to Gotham. Yeah, I like that this is not just changing the setting of Batman. It is using uh, like a real potential foe of that setting. And Jack the Ripper is a good example because he operated so briefly and left so mysteriously. Like there's so few things about Jack the Ripper that we can really factually cling on to. Yeah, there's more so, so many than other and... Yeah, more so than other villains of history. He has more room for imagination, more room for you to play around with. Exactly. Yeah. Um this was fun and I mentioned uh the artwork on the original stories by yeah. Mike Mignola, uh which I think just is perfect. Excuse me. Uh, is perfect for the 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 the, the book, right? We all know. Yeah. Bo- 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 it has this k- kind of like Victorian era Cthulhu style ho- 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 horror, right? And I think it's just it's a perfect match for for this type of story. So it was fun to see his his artwork there. Yeah, I did love the artwork yeah. in both parts of the comic. Mm-hmm. Good stuff indeed. Okay. I think that's about it for our just general spoiler free mm-hmm. thoughts and synopsis. So let me do a little bit of housekeeping and then we will get into our spoilers and stuff like that. If you guys did not know, we have multiple podcasts here at the Whatnots. Uh, you guys can find out more information on our website, which is the Whatnots.com, as well as your your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Just type in the whatnots and all of our shows will pop up right there. If you like what we do, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. We have a $3 tier uh, where you guys can get all kinds of exclusive content from all of our shows. Uh, Be on the lookout for uh, something new from Crossplay. Uh, in the fu- in the future here, we're working on getting our second Patreon exclusive c- 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 
crossplay thing recorded and posted for everyone. Um, and last but not least, a big shout out to our Patreon supporters at the five dollar tier. So thank you so much, Sam. Thanks, we appreciate Sam. You. We lo- 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 love you. Thank you for supporting us. Um, yeah, and I, I, I guess still just one more shout out since it's still so close to, to it uh, to our five year anniversary retrospective. Yeah. Um, which was a lot of fun. It's a long one. It's like four and a half a- 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 hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, we 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 had fun. We had some alcohol. We had some pizza. We gave away some awards. We played some tr- trivia. We laughed. We c- cried. It was good fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I I don't think we actually. No, I don't cried, remember the but... crying. The, the separate <laughs> from laughter. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was good. Okay. Uh. Let's get into spoilers. Hey, there we go. Spoiler section engaged. Mm -hmm. Um, So, Melissa, you started out with the movie. Uh Uh-huh. And then went back to the comic book i i want to talk about that so you you you, i i i think someone who knows kind of the batman mythos in general um even if you haven't read the comics if you just kind of know who some of the characters are i think you'll be fine watching the movie too but yeah i i think like i mentioned before if you don't know anything about batman which is kind of rare (laughs) these days yeah um you might not want to watch that one first, but what? Yeah, what was your experience like? Talk to me about the movie. What what made that stand out more than the comic? What I really appreciated about it was the amount of extra characters added in. Because when you told, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, when I'm thinking about an Elseworld, when I'm thinking about an alternate universe story, I want to see a large section of the cast. You know, of the How settings, of the tropes. Yeah, I want to see a lot of that reversed. And the comic was just Batman and Gotham with Alfred. And you, there's like one reference to the Joker and Gordon's in it. And I like, I didn't really, and Arkham's in it. It's mm-hmm. got like a handful of your very basic Batman things. But there's a lot to Batman. He's got that whole rogues gallery. And I like that the movie, it, Catwoman is a major character in it. You see... Uh, you see uh, Poison Ivy there at the beginning. You spend a lot more time with Gordon. You spend more time with Alfred. You see the r- r- Robins. Yes, They're yes, the Robins are in it. The way Gordon turns out to be the foe of the entire thing, like that's what I that that's what excites me about an alternate universe story. I get yeah. to see these spins on all of these characters and see them in completely different one-off situations. I don't want our main commissioner Gordon to be a villain, but it's fun to see him be a villain in this one off alternate story in a completely different timeline. That's exciting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely fun to see how they change everything. Um, I, I think I really liked the Robins, how they're yeah. just like a the the like street gang of the, the like <laughs> kids who are just out on on the on the street. Mm-hmm. Um I like I, I I liked that. I I where where I'm sh- I'm struggling is like I like things like that. I don't think they needed to include uh, I- 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 Ivy. Yeah, she is the first victim and she's out basically right after she's been introduced. I think she has like right five away, yeah. minutes of screen time. I would have liked her to have a, like a longer appearance or to have the cast dotted with more villains. Cause we've got a lot of Catwoman and that brief appearance of poison Ivy. They're I would have, Oh, and Harvey Dent penguins club or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That, that Harvey Dent nice. is in this too. He's never two faced. He's just Harvey Dent. But, um, but yeah, I would have appreciated if the cast had a, had been rounded out like here's the penguin here's our equivalent of the riddler you know uh this one is missing the joker reference which would have fit in it's interesting they chose to left that out yeah 
Um, but but yeah, like it's certain things like that. Like I don't as much as I like the Rogues g- 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 Gallery mm. and Batman has uh, you know an incredible cast of villains and supporting characters and and stuff like that. You don't necessarily need it to be a Batman story. And yeah, that I think is one of the things that I liked about the comic. Is it like let's just strip this down to the bare is, yes. bare bones and. To tell an essential Batman story. Of, it's of, it's of, very like, minimalist. And yeah. Um, but yeah, but that being said, I, I do like the movie because, yeah, it does take the time to expand and be like, OK, if we're if we need to fill this out, we need to actually start thinking about where would Catwoman fit in, in yeah. this? Where would uh yeah the robins fit are they in this maybe not mm. maybe they are you, you know um and so I, I i think the movie at the end of the day maybe seems a little more well thought out yeah um but I, yeah i just I, I like how simple the comic is i understand that yeah yeah one so, thing I, oh, go ahead sorry the comic, so in the movie, this Jack the Ripper character ends up being Commissioner Gordon, which is yeah. a, a very bold twist. In the Surprise. movie, it's <laughs> it's this uh, in the in the graphic novel, it's like an old friend of Thomas Wayne, like who, old war bu- 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 buddy. Yeah, who like Bruce sees as like an uncle, you know, and they've like they're on the same ship back to Gotham City from London, you know. They they start s- spending some time with each other, just catching up, and it turns out to be that guy, a, a man I've never heard of before, and I don't know if he's a canonical Batman character. Is that a pre-existing character? Not that I'm aware of. See, I feel like um, that. I like I was saying about the movie, I want to see these characters I am familiar with turned on their head and even characters that I wasn't familiar with, like Sister Leslie, when she shows up, she feels so rich that I'm like, oh, this must be a character from the comic that I just don't know. When Uncle Jake or whatever his name is shows up in the the graphic novel, I'm like, this guy yeah. feels brand new. I don't know who this is. And it didn't really have much of an emotional impact on me when it turns out he's the culprit at the end. I agree. I, I like Gordon being yeah. Jack the Ripper in the movie. But that's also one of the things I as much as I like it, I don't know if it fits with the original idea of the story. Yeah. I so like the 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 idea is that, yeah, the famous Jack the Ripper who was in London is now in Gotham. And yeah. that's not really the case for what's happening here. Like they, they still believe it's the original Jack mm. the Ripper, but I think maybe the subtext of the movie is that it's not, it's just Gordon kind of doing his best. Imp- like it, it just happens to be really similar. And so they equate yeah. him to Jack the Ripper. The comic has a lot more references to the London career of the Ripper. And I don't I barely remember that in the movie. It's more like you've heard of Jack the Ripper. Uh, We've picked him up and placed him in this Gotham setting the same way we picked up and placed Batman like they've started here. Which I like I I like that from the comic because the comic also starts out with this like narration it's 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 like a full page of narration from jack the river and i would have loved to see that in the movie to have this like voiceover um and i i thought that was a chilling way to start the book to to be spoken to, to, to by jack the ripper but we don't get that in the in the movie which is fine but yeah that's also think, uh so here, no, here's, like, here, here's my theory mm-hmm. on how they could have mixed both of them better yeah in my uh, opinion if they want to make gordon the bad g- 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 guy they should have tried to make the animated adaption maybe a little bit more like batman year one yeah, Where Batman Year One is basically a James Gordon story. Yes. 
where he it's not only Batman that is just getting back to Gotham. It's also James Gordon's you know, mm. like he, he's I'm just moving to Gotham. I used to be ex military. It could have been that like, hey, ex Scotland Yard. I'm yeah. just moving to Gotham because I think that was one of the things theories they mentioned in the book like they thought i was one of the cops or they thought mm. i was this or that right i think that would have worked a little better rather than to just be like oh he's jack the ripper but then it's like well is he really <laughs> i mean he wasn't in london for all we know and it would yeah. be strange that he was at the same time that batman was and they didn't be like oh james batman i know you <laughs> good old chum uh like i yeah i like as much as i think the movie is more well thought out that bit just i think once you really start to look at, at it doesn't hold up as as much yeah and i was going to say that having that narration in the graphic novel makes sense because it's just a typeface. If they put right. this in the movie, they would have to put a voice to it. You could match that voice to Jim Gordon. Uh, maybe he, he does use a different voice when he's Jack the Ripper, but Jack Slightly. the Ripper doesn't really yeah. talk. That's not part of his villainous M.O. And this is in an older time where it's not like, you know, in current Batman, where maybe he is a voice modulator in his mask like there's himself, no voice yeah. modulation you would probably just sound like yourself so like that's yeah. a narrative twist that just doesn't transfer from a, a comic book to a movie under these circumstances yeah it it, it's, it still works though for the, the most mm -hmm. part it's not it's it, again it's something you kind of just have to stare at, at it for a while for a while and then it's like oh I guess that doesn't really make sense, but eh. who, who who cares? Yeah. Um. So what else about the movie did did you enjoy? I really liked that version of Catwoman. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, that's fair. I was watching it one. thinking, what is my own personal sexiest version of Catwoman? Because I think it is this. <laughs> Catwoman, a character who can be evaluated on many fronts. I don't mean to minimize her to strictly being a sex object, but watching it, I'm like, she seems she, way hotter than any other Catwoman. Ap right. Appeal to her character more, built in. Yeah, more than any other version of Catwoman that I've encountered. And I think it's the showgirl aspect of it. She's like a singer and a dancer, and she's got the like big can can skirt and like the feathers and the fans and the corsets and everything. And this like yeah. stage show. I liked that side of her. I think that's fun. It is sexy and it's fun. I liked that. She had this career as a well-respected performer. And also she was trying to use the little bit of the you know, uh, notoriety she had for good and like, speak up for people out there downtrodden yeah. in Gotham City, yeah. which is a classic part of the Catwoman story. She is, you know, she, she's like, and she's like Batman in that she does have the, you know, the welfare, general public welfare at heart to some degree. You know, she watches out for the little guy out there. I like that that was retained. That was built upon. She's this is like some of the best Bruce and Selena like chemistry I've seen from any combination of those characters. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not to put down any of the other fine actors who've portrayed these characters. Just this this situation in this setting. I don't know. It really worked for me. I had so much fun watching the two of them together. I love that version of Catwoman and I love their little romance that they have. Yeah, this version of Catwoman, I think, does oddly mirror Batman year one mm. qu quite a bit, um, where in, in Batman year one, she does seem to kind of, it's suggested maybe she's a prostitute mm -hmm. in, in there, and in 
This one, it's kind of the same thing. She's maybe like a full service escort kind of thing. It's 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 not really stated, but she's a performer. So. She works in like strip clubs. You, you, you know, there's some gray of just like, we're not going to say exactly. It seems like it was you more on like the own. burlesque side of things where it's like it's sure, all yeah, uh, right. it's a it's a, you know, big sense. flashy you know, a uh, flirty stage show. Yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, like she is this performer and she is trying to look out for the girls that are less f- fortunate than her. Yeah. That might not be a- 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 able to defend themselves like she knows how. And that's basically what she's doing in Batman year one. Mm. Um, it, it is she 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 kind of wants to be the big sister yeah like, let me look out for you and make sure that you're okay mm-hmm. um which is good and and yeah and then like you said she has that like flirty sexy aspect but she's still like again like she's not she i i think as much as other men desire her it's in this time period where like you're really not seeing cleavage. You're really like you yes. might see some leg, but that's it. Like she, mm. she is not a sex object object in the way we think of nowadays. Yeah, yeah. She probably would have been pr- pretty scandalous for <laughs> back then, right? Yeah. But uh, because they make some c- c- comments of like, oh, I should have known you were sleeping with this g- 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 guy, mm. you know. Um, but. Yeah, like I, I think the movie does a good job of not sexualizing her, but having yeah. her sexuality be her her own thing and something she knows how to use yeah. the way she wants to, 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 to. She wants to. It's like part of her character, part of her personality, like a yeah. strength that she knows she has and enjoys to have. Yeah, it isn't something that's like laid on top of her. It is fully within and about her. Yeah. Which I appreciated. I really l- love the scene where Batman, he's covered in blood. Cause he's like tried to stop the Ripper, I think. But mm-hmm. of course the, the police force is going to suspect that he is the Ripper. He's this mysterious nighttime force. He is covered in blood. He's trying to escape from the scene of the crime. He thinks he's hit a dead end. And then Catwoman rolls up in this carriage and she's like, get in. She's like, well, we have to get rid of those clothes. Uh, they're probably going to stop this carriage. They're stopping all the carriages around here. You need to get those bloody clothes off because those are a, a dead giveaway. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I see what the, how they're going to hide this. You know, he's going to be naked and maybe she'll be like sitting on his lap, kissing him or something. No, they are like both completely naked on the floor in the middle of doing yeah. it when this like Gotham police officer opens the carriage door. And I'm like, Which- that's... A they, lot. That's a big escalation to what I thought you might be doing. They because that they they were they they heard them being like, "Hey, stop the ca- carriage!" You know, yeah. like uh, open up in the name of the law. And within like ten seconds, they're both right. just like, "All right, we're fucking. Let's go." Yeah. <laughs> like then, we both understand like, what has to happen here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, and and, and the the, uh, the odd thing about that scene too is not that they do that like i'm i'm fine with that that also makes sense that's a good yeah. c- 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 cover that like okay yeah it makes sense the weird thing about that scene is the cops just stand there for so long just staring at them and just <laughs> they're being so like, shocked oh, um okay uh did did you guys see anything <laughs> and it's like dudes they're Come on! Right. They don't, they have no idea what they're doing. Like this is probably the first at time least, they've it's ever happened to them. At least shut the door and talk through the door. Give them some right. privacy. And it, right? and it plays not like you know these guys are being creepy and trying to look at them. Just that they are like so shocked, so shocked. They have no idea what to do. Like they don't have the sense to close the door. But it it just it just it goes on for so long, and it's just like oh my god, you guys stop yeah. don't you just shut the door <laughs> go away <laughs> but yeah it's good it's, it's good it's good um yeah like i i think in terms of having catwoman in the movie i think she's a good addition to the film because she is also a 
woman that can fight back, right? She's not mm-hmm. just a victim in in this. Whereas in the co- comic, there is no one that fights back, right? You just yeah, know that yeah. oh, he the J- Jack the Ripper is back in town and he's done at least two or three murders. We don't know exactly, but he you know he's starting to do his thing again here in Gotham. And I I think this presents an interesting obstacle for the film. It's not just Batman out there who's starting to be like, I think I need to look into this. It's actually one of the uh, to-be victims or potential victims. And it, it, like, she stops him. Yeah, like, she's taking an active interest in... uh, a threat that may befall herself and her community. Yeah, yeah. Which I appreciated. It's nice to have this foe being chased from various fronts. Mm-hmm. What did you think of Leslie Tompkins? Z? I, I liked her. Are, are, are you super familiar no, with her? I had in never, general? Okay. I'd never heard of her before, but I'm looking at her and I'm like, I completely understand. I can like, trace back who she may be in regular Batman canon and how she was converted to this alternate universe. Yeah. Um, so in, in the Batman mythos, I don't remember how they met or stuff like that exactly, but basically she's the like nurse. Like if, Mm. if Batman, uh, needs to get stitched up, it's usually out. Yeah. But if there's, some like extenuating circumstance or they need to send someone else right they don't want to take them back to the back cave or back to wayne manor to be like gee alfred uh i knew you were in the military a long (laughs) time ago but you are a damn good medic what's up with that (laughs) they they send them to leslie tompkins uh if you've seen the show gotham she's in that show I saw like the first handful of episodes of it. I did recognize a uh, Harvey Bullock from that show. Good like that Bullock, name sounds yeah. familiar. Where is there another Harvey? Right. That's Donald Logue. Uh, Donald Logue. Yeah. Uh, Harvey Bullock is definitely more of a mainstay in the Batman mythos. He's uh, yeah, just another one of the cops. He's older, maybe mm. a more by the books cop um and yes seems more like like a rough and tumble like new york yeah. cop if that makes yeah, sense like, like he's, an old school yeah, yeah like what i remember from gotham is that like he's a guy who is basically he's good enough and he he'll look the other way sometimes and jim is like a lot more by the book and no i'm i'm doing exactly what is right for everybody i'm keeping my nose clean you're not gonna buy me off for yeah, anything it's 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 let's do the right thing by the books versus let's do the right thing, but maybe we'll do it in a way that's, you know, yeah. gets me some extra yeah, Who cares money. if we fudge this? Look at the city we live in. You think fudging is the worst thing anything, worst thing anybody yeah. around here is doing? Yeah. You can fudge it and it's still better than Two-Face or whoever. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, better than Two-Face. This is the creed yeah. that many Gothamites live by. Indeed. Um... <laughs> So I I I want to mention some stuff from the comics. I actually yeah. want to get back to uh, say something else about Jack the Ripper eventually. So mm-hmm. yeah, the the comic, um, I I don't remember exactly how he gets framed. I I I I think it's uh, they maybe, find it. Uh, they come to search Wayne Manor, and I, I oh, think because it's like the knife. There's like a right, bloody like the, knife who has been. <laughs> yeah, and like there. Bruce is whispering to Alfred, like, "You have you hidden my evening clothes?" And Alfred's like, "Yes, sir. They're well hidden away." And then Gordon comes up, like, "Bruce, I don't know how you thought we could miss this." And he's hi- holding up like a very <laughs> obvious bloody knife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like, uh, yeah, I found this in your living room. What's up with that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, but yeah, so he he gets framed. But what I liked about the comic is that once they arrest Bruce and put him uh-huh. in Ar- Arkham, he's still like, look, you have the wrong man. 
you guys are about to execute me or whatever you guys are about to do in like a week. So he is yeah, like, but <laughs> this is where Batman is like, I'm the world's greatest detective. Give me everything you have on Jack the Ripper right now. And, and he must I, have I enough it. <laughs> enough pull as a Gotham, like local wealthy socialite that none of the guards care that he's a giant conspiracy wall set up on one wall of his prison cell. Like they're apparently OK with him having like scissors and like red string and pens and all that stuff. Yeah, I, it, it must have just been a different time where they just didn't really care. Yeah, right? you know, fine. If you're if we're going to kill you he, he in 10 himself, days, you can himself because yeah, you yeah, can have a they, hobby. Yeah. Make your final scrapbook, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's sitting there scrapbooking about Jack the Ripper. <laughs> um, and I, I like I, I like that. That yeah. I think is what to me, one of the things that really makes the comic shine, because Batman uh-huh. is often known as the world's greatest detective. Yeah. But there's a there's not many stories that really rely on that of Batman being a True. detective and stuff like that. It's all just like, let me go punch him in, in the face and be like, where is he? And then <laughs> they tell him and then he finds them. Yeah. Let me just keep zooming in on this picture until I see that Wonder Woman is there in the background. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Enhance. <laughs> Enhance. This is what I is remember that, from Batman v Superman. It's a lot of like Alfred, zooming in on enhance, photos. Enhance right there. <laughs> By golly, Alfred, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like I, I like him being a detective and working it out and and proving like, look, this is not me. Here's all of the stuff you need to know. It's actually this guy who's, you know, he has experience in this field like that makes sense to me of what would happen in that time especially when he's locked up and can't punch things right he's going to be a detective um and yeah i like i i i ended up liking that aspect a little more because when he gets arrested in the movie he's put in jail and pretty much immediately gets out right away starts a fight and then it's just like, I'm going to escape in the chaos. Yeah. And he does like there. There is no there is no real detective work. I did like that about the comic a lot that because we did get the smaller scope, we did spend more time in Bruce's head, seeing him piece through the mystery. Yeah. Whereas in the movie. It, once he discovers it's gordon you can kind of realize that he was starting to suspect him and we just didn't Mm -hmm. know it yeah but it's it's one of those things because like he's he's at their house and he's like i need to speak to gordon and his wife is like well he's not here right now and then he like walks in another one of the rooms and she's like what what are you doing you can't go in there like it was like (laughs) batman what are you doing and then it's like jack the ripper's secret lair he has all these body parts and stuff and it's just like you may have found a bloody knife (laughs) but i found all of this stuff that that was a little too easy for me like i would have liked him see i would have liked to have seen him put a couple pieces together and like do something beyond just pushing barbara aside and walking through a door that was left (laughs) open in their house (laughs) yeah yeah um so I, I I didn't like that as much. But then yeah. for Jack the Ripper specifically, what I didn't like about him in the movie, it, it, he felt more like a butcher rather yeah. than everything we've heard of about Jack the Ripper, where he's very precise. They think he had some k- k- kind of medical knowledge. Whereas yeah. when you see him stabbing uh, Ivy, he's just butchering her. Like, he's just Mm. stabbing her again and again and again. It's not, like, precise cuts. Okay, let me take out your spleen or whatever the hell he he did. Yeah, how are you going to eat that kidney later? Which he did. Well, he wrote a letter, theoretically. So, like, the Jack the Ripper wrote all of these letters, we think, maybe. Like, there's no real way to prove if he actually did or if that was, like, 
some newspaper reporter wrote those as if they were from Jack the Ripper or if it was a copycat or a right, prank. Yeah. According to one of the letters, he did like, I'm going to send you half a kidney and then I ate the other half of the kidney. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. How are you going to eat a kidney if it's all squished up already? So I, yeah, there's that. But then the next like encounter is when he's trying to kill cat women and they are literally in a butcher shop. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, you're, you're really pounding home this metaphor that he's a butcher. Mm-hmm. I get it. And, but like, again, in the comic, they mention that, well, maybe they thought he was a butcher because he would know how to cut these people open and stuff. Like, If he was a butcher, like he has experience working with meat. For lack of better I did watch like a 40 minute video on Jack the Ripper yesterday to kind of refresh my memory of the actual, the real life lore of of this villain. And one of the lead uh, uh, suspects for Jack the Ripper, maybe not at the time, but like, you know, as Ripperologists have continued to study the case. It is a man who was like a, a fishmonger. And they talk about how like working, like gutting and preparing the fish would have given him enough of a sense right. yeah. of biology to do what he did to these human bodies. Which makes sense mm-hmm. if if that's the route you want to go. But even then, if if because one of the things I always hear is how precise he was. Like mm-hmm. it seems like he has medical knowledge or it seems yeah. like he knows yeah. what he's doing, which – if you're fighting someone, you can't really it, – it's very, very difficult to be that precise. Whereas yeah. if he had captured them and knocked them out or done something like that, that would have made more – like if, if they had done that, then I don't think I would, 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 would have had this complaint. But he's just fighting them. Like mm. he's not tying them up. He's not knocking them out. He tries to j- j- drug – cat woman to knock her out but it just it doesn't really work but yeah like i it's just i i i don't think they did jack the ripper right in the animated version i think is my biggest complaint i understand yeah yeah he does feel like more of a threat in the comic i think Mm mm-hmm I uh, I want to talk about that second half of the graphic novel yes. where the Ripper story has been left behind and we're getting this completely other foe, the like master of tomorrow or whatever he calls mm-hmm. himself, who's threatening uh, this Gotham City exhibition, this World's Fair type of celebration that they're having. And yeah. the movie doesn't really take anything from that story except for that World's Fair setting, which I really liked. Book. Yeah, yeah. And like the... You know, when the final scenes of the movie is this fight on this big Ferris wheel. I'm always excited to see a Ferris wheel. DC has given us some of the best Ferris wheel fight scenes I've seen between this and Birds of Prey and Shazam. Uh, I want to see Marvel a good step Ferris up. Ferris the- wheel. Marvel, you got to step up your Ferris wheel game, please. Spider-Man's not that far from Coney Island. <laughs> I, could, I could see one in WandaVision. If they yeah, go to like a t- you know, maybe there's like a fair. Yeah. Yeah. Heck, we'll see. We'll have to this, wait and see. Not there's a number of characters that could week, go to a carnival. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that setting. And I want to ask, is that like Alexandra Leroy character? Is he pre-existing from comics? Roy, I, I don't think so. Not that I know of. Let me see if I can because um... I love how he enters this comic story where there's like some like uh, like kind of a town hall meeting preparing for this world's fair. Bruce is there because he's like funding this fair. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just all these people getting up and saying, well, I want this at the fair. And well, if we spend this money at the fair, what are we going to do about my slum renewal project? What's happening to that? <laughs> and then this guy literally bursts through one of the windows and starts yelling and is like, I'm the master of the future. You call this the fair of tomorrow. You should look to me. He's just breaking glass and screaming. I had no idea who this guy was, but he's wearing this like, you know, this very regal 
vaguely like, you know, the, like those old military coats with like the epaulets and everything. And he has this cloak with like the collar bent over and these big yellow gloves. And he looks like a Doctor Strange of some kind. Almost. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, is there a DC equivalent to that guy that this character could uh, be? I had no idea where to place him, but I was immediately entertained by him. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't look like it. it looks like he's an original ca- character really? for this story. Um, however, according to DCFandom.com in the Alexander Leroy wiki page, Good. Uh, a- a- apparently this whole Gotham by Gaslight Earth is Earth 19. Fun fact. Uh, okay. But down in the notes, it says that Leroy shares some tra- traits of Batman's villain Ra's al Ghul. Uh, with very similar goals and methods, such as their concerns on man-made pollution and megalo and a megalomaniac outlook. Okay. But I, I, I didn't get a Ra's al Ghul thing with that. I at first I was wondering if he was going to be like a Superman thing because he's like I'm the master of tomorrow and he Superman does have the is Superman the color scheme. Ish. He's got that yeah. bold, bright, like red, yellow, blue color scheme going yeah because like i i i wondered if it was gonna be more of like a batman superman thing of so he's not really a villain but they're maybe gonna pit them yeah odds of like they both want the same thing but they have different methods of how to go about it um but yeah no that that was not the case Mm mm-hmm I wonder if he's I was like, yeah, showing well, up. Why would they name him Alexander Leroy if he's just going to be Clark Kent? That makes yeah. no sense. So. <laughs> it's such a great name and like a great look for this guy. Like even if you do modernize him, place him in, you know, where whatever Earth Batman main canon Batman is like, I w- does the wiki say if this guy has shown up, if he's been reincarnated elsewhere? Because he seems like a guy you could do something with. I, I don't think so. No, I want him to just I, uh, break through the windows of like contemporary Wayne Enterprises in like a loud suit, just yelling. <laughs> yeah, like a just like the that that powder blue suit from Dumb and Dumber. It's just like, oh, my God, why is this? Why is it so loud? <laughs> but no, he's not shown up any where dang somebody pick this guy up and use him somewhere <laughs> it says alignment bad citizenship oh. french occupation air pirate <laughs> alignment bad <laughs> like they don't even get into the D alignments like if he's chaotic neutral no just bad bad yeah oh well <laughs> Um, I, yeah, so I, like, I, I, I liked the second story fine. I don't think I needed it because I I don't think it really expanded on the world all that much besides just like, what if we have another adventure in there? And I was just like, okay, not as interesting without Jack the Ripper, but. It seems like it was maybe there to fill out the page count so that, uh, you know, the Jack the Ripper story could be published as a standalone graphic novel. Yeah, or just to have like an actual hit. Let's have a graphic novel edition of this thing. And it's like 50 pages is a little short and you already put that out once as a single issue. Yeah. Can you do another story? Yeah. I did appreciate that it gave the movie the World's Fair backdrop. That was very, mm-hmm. And because we have this World's Fair backdrop, this Jack the Ripper also takes on echoes of H.H. H. Holmes. Interesting. Yeah. How so? Are you familiar with H.H. H. Holmes? Not particularly. Okay. He is also known as the Devil in the White City because I was in uh, the name of this true crime book that was published about him some years ago. In the like 19, uh, not 19, like a... Uh, like 1896 like world's fair exposition in chicago he was a local hotel owner he set up his hotel because this was going to be a huge tourism boom for the city and people would check into his hotel and not check out all these people were going missing and you know it was such a 
you know, it's 1896. Like records are a mess. Nobody really knows where anybody is. People are flooding in and out of the city for the, the world's fair. Right. Yeah. But eventually all these disappearances get tied to this hotel and they find out that he has built a murder building. He built that hotel himself. It's oh, filled wow. with all of these secret rooms and secret chambers. And like, here's a trap door that leads to a chute that's only one person wide and you fall down the chute and then he like burns you alive or something or he'll trap you in an airtight room and suffocate you. Yeah. He was just killing all of these people. And then like, dissecting and inspecting their bodies and like selling the skeletons to like medical companies for research and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 And like he, he killed like 30 people or something like that. One of the first episodes of the podcast lore is about this guy. Ah. It's a fascinating episode. That's where I know him from. He has a name like J. Jonah Jameson. Right. right. He, does sound, he does sound like another comic book character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know it, it, it's funny so i i've 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 heard of that now that you mentioned the story i've i've heard it somehow in passing but yeah i i was not super f- familiar with that but yeah that makes sense that he has this like science fair thing going on yeah. this i am a menace for science <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah. Um, I also want to say before we wrap up, I love these Alfreds. Anthony Stewart Head Alfred's from Buffy, great, yeah. I think, plays the Alfred in the movie. He does a great job. He's not in it much, but that's a solid Alfred performance. There you go. And uh, I, I just reiterating what I mentioned earlier, I love the art in both of these comic stories. Like even if the second story didn't have that much to it. It looks beautiful. Like the colors are so vivid. The expressions are like so dynamic. And the first book, like Mignola has this very sort of heavy shadowed, highly contrasted, like a little scratchy art style that makes for a beautiful Gotham city. The cityscapes Mm -hmm. in that book are great. It's one of my favorite Gotham city depictions I have seen. And I think I forget the exact name, but I think I was looking at one of the like shop names in the background in one of the city street scenes. And it was the name of one of the Jack the Ripper suspects. Like it was like a guy who's a painter or Ah, something. And it's like, so-and-so's art shop. Interesting. Yeah. So if you go back through there, there might be more Easter eggs like that hidden to pick up on. There probably is. Um, Yeah. I don't know. I, I, um, I, I think I, 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 Mignola's artwork, I think, is just so iconic that mm-hmm. almost no matter who you get for that second story is going to be living in the shadow of Mike Mignola, right? Um, I, like, like you, to, to be honest, I, I didn't particularly like the artwork in the second story, but it was all, like, it, that's not to say it was, bad it was just that i liked mike bignola's yeah, artwork I so much that it yeah it, it was like okay well this is not how i imagine this gotham now and mm. oh so i also wanted to ask you in that second story batman <laughs> bruce has a love interest there's this woman named julie is, is she just made up for this she seemed very flimsy and out of the you know the not rogues gal the lovers gallery of batman i don't recall any julie <laughs> it seems like a place they could have put julie madison right mm-hmm. yeah is that her name okay let me look her up here like it seems like a place they could have put they could have put a vicky or i well you know this would have been before we had talia probably i don't know what batman love interests entered when but this would have been around vicky times i'm interested that yeah <laughs> that it was the separate woman I'm not familiar with and didn't seem like she had an exterior life okay. in that she was an adaptation of, of working backwards from a, a main comic character. Yeah, so uh, she 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 is a more oh. known character. OK, um, I've, I've I don't know her. I've re- read some stuff of hers uh, or I guess that she is I- in, um, but I she's not a super well-known character but she's in there uh, okay she's best known as being batman's first significant romantic interest um, in what year 
So uh, she uh, made her debut. Her first appearance was in Detective Comics 31. Like old school stuff. Okay. Maybe um, that's why she, she felt made, sort of uh, shallow. Well, she she made her last appearance in the golden age of comics in, Dis- in Detective Comics 49, which was March of 1941. Um, see, she's originally portrayed as in as an often imperiled socialite who is engaged to Bruce Wayne and is unaware of his secret life uh, as Batman. She fears what an that exciting Bruce, character profile. She fe- fears that Bruce will never be a- 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 anything but a spoiled, lazy play b- 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 boy, uh, but is fascinated with Batman, considering him her ideal man. Oh, um, okay. That's see, something. Post crisis stuff. Uh, she appears in the six issue mini series Batman and the Monster Men by Matt Wagner. Uh, she is, is set early in Batman's career, reintroduces Julie Madison. This version of the character is a law student and daughter mm. of Norman Madison, uh, a failing businessman who borrows money from the, the mobster Sal Maroney. Bruce Wayne cares deeply for Julie, but is reluctant to tell her the secrets of his nighttime activities. Sure. Uh, however, she herself suspects that Bruce is hiding something from her. Okay. Um, yeah, that is how she plays out in this comic. Okay, I'm glad to hear that she has some basis in some very old comic history. That is kind of nice that yeah, they pulled... A minor love interest out from decades earlier to fill that She's role. also in the New 52. It looks like she makes oh. an appearance in Zero Year uh, in Scott Snyder's run, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, yeah. So there you All go. All right. Good to learn about Julie Madison. Julie Madison. Uh, I don't know if I have much else to say. Mm -hmm. on these things i had fun i enjoyed them uh there was a surprising short musical number in in oh yes i like that a lot adaption which was kind of fun and was a good song was kind of catchy too Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah it was good it was fun i i I enjoyed this i'm glad we got to read this book because yeah i think of the DC Comics, like Elseworld stories, this is one of them that I had often heard about. Yeah, I, I necessarily hadn't heard much, or whether it was good or bad. But it was like, hey, Mike Mignola, Batman, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, Gotham by Gaslight, and so yeah, I, I think it's 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 one to check out if you're okay. looking for a good Elseworlds Batman story. So. Yeah, yeah, I think it it could, you know, maybe not for somebody who knows nothing about Batman, but uh, for somebody like me, who's more of a a lay person, I've seen the movies, read a handful of comics, good, good, yeah, there's a, (laughs) it it won't overwhelm you with stuff that you don't understand, taking Batman and putting him in an alternate dimension. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay. We want to do recommendations for if you, we liked this, yeah. what else might people like? This reminded me a lot of the BBC Sherlock series. They ah. did a holiday special that was set back in Victorian times. I so this that is one. a yeah. modern day Sherlock Holmes series. And so they did one one off episode uh, that is all the actors playing their characters in the traditional Victorian Sherlock Holmes setting with like a an, a mystery that I think is a little truer to the stuff that happens in the books. And I guess it's not really a one off. It ends up at the end tying into what's currently happening in the show, like between the season three finale and the season four premiere. So I don't know if mm-hmm. it's the best thing to watch if you haven't already watched Sherlock, but the episode's very fun. They do a great job of maintaining uh, enough of the tone of the show that they already have and melding yeah. it with this separate time period. That was a good one. That was fun. I actually also want to recommend uh, some Sherlock Holmes stuff. This uh-huh. reminded me a lot of the um, Robert Downey Jr. Yes. Uh, Sherlock Holmes stuff, which per- personally I'm not a huge fan of. Um, mm. 
And oddly enough, it's because of the thing I'm about to recommend next. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, I, I think if you enjoyed this, I think the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes is worth checking out because um, it is set back in that time period. But it is also kind of that more modern uh, take on the character. Yeah. Right. Um, and it, it it's Robert Downey J- Jr. And he's funny and it's action packed jude law is a great watson yeah there you go yeah uh to not to to interrupt if you have more recommendations Uh, but i guess this leads directly into yeah go ahead my next one which is alan moore's from hell which is Mm -hmm. all about jack the ripper um Back when I first started reading comics, this was actually one of the first comics that I read, which was probably a mistake. Uh, And I probably need to go read that book again. Um, But the kind of general plot and some of the things that that happens and they focus on within the book, uh, which is all about Jack the Ripper, is basically the plot of that first Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes mm-hmm. film. And I, so I was just like, they're just co- 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 copying from hell. Like, well, what is this? Like, at, at least copy a Sherlock Holmes story, right? Mm-hmm. Not not the Jack the Ripper story, but it, it, it makes sense. We're looking back. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would recommend that. However, uh, that is... Maybe a lot more gruesome. Uh, mm. It is uh, maybe a lot more realistic and in depth, and uh, just a very serious take and look at Jack the Ripper and the theories and possibilities of who it could have been. Uh, and it is a pretty famous graphic novel. I think the movie adaption of that that they made starred Johnny Depp. If I'm I think not mistaken. so. Uh, I think he was one of the like inspectors or something like that in that film. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, there you go. Go check out mm-hmm. From Hell. Yeah, that's a very apt recommendation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't really. Yes. Uh, I had two other minor things. Uh, <laughs> just the Victorian setting of this reminded me of the one episode of Green Lantern, the animated series, where they go to a steampunk planet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember what episode that is. Green Lantern, the animated series, is only 26 episodes long. It was canceled after the first season, but it's a very good show. And somewhere in there, there's a fun steampunk episode. It did remind, because I think they fought on a blimp in that one. Yes, <laughs> it involves a yeah. blimp. If you need more blimp fights, it's in there for you. <laughs> and I also wanted to mention, just talking about these DC animated adaptations, Uh, I haven't seen many of them, but I want to shout out the Dark Knight Returns adaptation where Michael Emerson from Lost is the voice of the Joker. He's a fantastic Joker. There you go. Good stuff. I'm going to take a second and praise Michael Emerson for his fine acting work. He is a fine actor indeed. Uh, I have one more recommendation, uh, and this is for just if you want another good Elseworlds story. Uh, go read Superman Red Sun. I, ah, I, I, yes. I think that is maybe one of the, the most or uh, yeah, the, the most, if not the most famous Elseworlds story and alternate reality take on Superman. Uh, and it's what if he landed in Soviet Russia instead of the United States uh, mm. and how his life would have been different from from that stuff uh it's an interesting take on that so yeah i think that would be another good recommendation uh yeah that's it melissa pitches for this next week yeah i wanted to still not start the year off uh this is my first new set of pitches here in this new year i wanted to start off with some audio dramas yeah good stuff yeah, we love audio dramas. I've been in a big audio drama mood lately, and I think we only covered one last year. We just covered Marvels, if I'm not mistaken. I think so I wanted so, yeah. to make sure we got some of this medium early in in this year. So pitch number one is the podcast Rabbits. 
This is ah, part of the yes. Pacific Northwest Stories family of podcasts with uh, the Black Tapes podcast and Tannis and Fairy is their newest one. Uh, you haven't listened to this one, right? I have not listened to I so I the only ones I I listened to was Black Tapes and Tannis. Okay. So no, I have not. Really? I I think you'd really dig rabbits. I was surprised to hear that you hadn't listened to it because it's about a game. Let me yeah, get these that's what I remember. descriptions up on my phone. I just took screenshots of the podcast app. When Carly Parker's friend Yumiko goes missing under very mysterious circumstances, Carly's search for her friend leads her headfirst into an ancient mysterious game known only as Rabbits. Soon Carly begins to suspect that Rabbits is much more than just a game, and that the key to understanding Rabbits might be the key to the survival of our species and the universe as we know it. Wow. Uh, which is... the very big way to end <laughs> that initial <laughs> description it's kind of right, like yeah. how tannis starts with like this thing's weird i don't know what it is and then it becomes super all-encompassing like tannis has been secretly running the entire world for centuries everything <laughs> is tannis i this is a really interesting mystery about this kind of underground scavenger hunty type game and the mm -hmm. podcast, much like how Tannis pulls from a lot of assorted cultural reference points, this talks about like old arcade games and like web forums, just like histories of various games. It's a really interesting mystery. This season one came out like four, four years ago, and I know season two was eventually supposed to arrive. I'm excited for whenever it does. I, I really like this podcast. And so season one is 10 episodes. OK. Yep. And season two, um, uh, pitch number two is a podcast called Uncanny County. I think I've ah, pitched yes. this to you before. This is an anthology show. Every episode is a new story. I think there's like some very loose like uh, elements that tie it together, like maybe the same town or the same sheriff mm -hmm. appears or something like that. And the season one of the show is 12 episodes long. And the uh, podcast addict description for this is mystical truck drivers, robots gone haywire, killer clown demons and pie. So much pie. This quirky, darkly comic Southwestern flavored anthology brings you a new paranormal audio play every month. Sit back, open your ears and hold on tight because you're about to take a quick detour through uncanny county. It's it's kind of like a fun Twilight Zone in that every episode sure. is this odd little tale with a twist to it, but it's not so much the like cautionary tale. I hold a mirror up to mankind. The true villain has been you. It's you know you it's, are it's the Walking Dead. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's much lighter than that. There's sort of yeah okay fun, very interesting little one shot episodes. And pitch number three, I wanted to look up a podcast I wasn't familiar with, and I landed on The Amelia Project. Ah. Yeah, I, I think I'd heard, heard I think I'd heard the name maybe once before. Uh, the Amelia Project is a secret agency that fakes its clients' deaths, then lets them reappear with a brand new identity. A black comedy full of secrets, twists, and cocoa. <laughs> So it's just Hi these audio files. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I wish rabbits had like its own key snack. Carrots, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I listened to the first two episodes of the show. This is more of a straightforward comedy about it's the audio logs of these people who come to this business and it's their interviews about what their story is, why they want to fake their deaths and how they're going to do it. Uh, this Season one is, uh, I looked through the episode guide. It lists episode 11 as the finale, but then it has two bonus episodes that are also labeled under season one. So I'd say all 13 episodes would count for season one. And then between sense. each episode, there's like a little mini episode. And I didn't listen to any of those. So I don't know if that's like a bonus scene or if that's like, a preview like we take it we took a scene out of context here's a preview for next week's episode i don't know what okay. they are so gotcha yeah so pitch number one is rabbits 
And then we have Uncanny County and The Amelia Project. Yeah. Uh, so fun fact, uh, I mm. actually, over the weekend, I, I guess just put on Twitter like, hey, one of the goals that I have for 2021 just in the whatnots in ge- in general yeah. uh, was to have more ge- guests on our sh- our shows. And then I like tagged some p- people that I w- w- wanted to have as guests. And Paul Bay was one of them, <laughs> uh, creator of the Black Tapes podcast and, you know, what, what works on all of these Pacific Northwest st- st- stories. Mm-hmm. He responded and was like, let's make it happen. Uh, yes. So uh, hopefully down the road here, uh, we might have him on the captain's l- 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 log or something like that. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Fingers crossed it works mm-hmm. out. Um, and also fun fact, Uncanny County follows us on Twitter. Oh, uh, nice. So yeah, that, 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 that's 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 neat. Um, but I think I'm actually going to go with the Amelia project because it's one i oh. haven't heard of oh okay um, and I, I i i feel like as much as i love the stuff that paul bay does uh, uh, in, in in his whole t- 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 team with pacific northwest stories i feel like it's kind of a known quantity yeah the the sense. shows under that umbrella do follow a, a fairly similar format and tone to each other yeah, yeah. Uh, Uncanny County, I would love to get to ev- eventually, but yeah, I, I, I think just because I haven't heard of the Amelia Project, and it, we so rarely do, like, actual comedic stuff on the, the show, I, I think it'd, it'd be good to have a comedy audio drama. Okay, yeah, there I go. listened to just the first two episodes of this. I did enjoy it, and one thing I really appreciate it is that it is, like, these interviews with the client and the person at the company. So it's an audio drama that's very easy to follow. There aren't multiple right, yeah. characters or settings or a lot of action. And it is more comedic. And I'm interested to see if it stays that way or if we do hit some dramatic twist <laughs> several episodes in. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it did say it was a black c- comedy or like, like a darker yeah. c- comedy. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there might be some stuff that's like, ooh, kind of heavy, but you're joking around with this stuff. Okay. Yeah, or if there, <laughs> if there becomes like a ongoing character dynamic oh, sure. that we have, if our character develops or, an arc, or if he's just interviewing people and drinking cocoa. Someone wants to fake their death to get away from someone, and the other person c- 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 comes in that they wouldn't yeah. even get away from was like i want to fake my death so i can get get get, get, get away from the original <laughs> yeah guy something like that who knows yeah we'll see i'm excited for that uh that is what we will do this next week then mm-hmm. season one of the amelia project i'm excited yeah About yeah we episodes had, we did another uh audio d- drama on the show. Yeah, and then I looked up uh, a bunch of ones, so I'll probably be throwing in more audio drama pitches throughout the year. Sounds good. Yeah. I, I, I plan on doing at least one or two pitches of that uh, this year as well. Nice. I, I have some goals for the review show uh, of, of just like, I still want to do a K-drama because I, I I don't know anything about Korean dramas besides the like crime shows that I've watched. Yeah. But those I don't really equate those with K mm. dramas like the the way, way that I think of them, stuff like that. Or uh, mm. I, I I don't know. I I, I had some more. Um, I it's not off the top of my head, but I, I'll have to go think on all that stuff. It's in there. Mm. It's rattling around somewhere yeah. in my head. You know. I'm working on like three hours of sleep. So, oh dear. Yeah, yeah. Let's finish this up and then you can go take a nap. Indeed, exactly. Uh, yeah. Melissa, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W I L K Y W I T. You can listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities, where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids' shows you have to remember. And my friend Jack just started a podcast called Your Friendly Neighborhood Filmcast, 
or she and a guest uh-huh. just spread the good word about a movie you should know. And I was honored to be on the first episode, just dropped a couple days ago, where we are talking awesome. about Tenet. That's good. That's yeah. fun. You guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter and Instagram. If you guys want to stay up to date with our shows, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. Uh, go like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. You guys know the the deal. I was about to say, I was about to mix deal and drill. <laughs> it, drill. You know the drill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you guys know what to do with all that stuff. But please, this year, if you have not already, which is like all of you, uh, <laughs> uh, p- please go uh, rate and review us on iTunes or Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. I know every podcast and their mom says the exact same thing of go rate and review, blah, blah, blah. It helps us out. It actually does, though. So p- mm. please go help us out, especially since we're just these like a small time creators right it helps us <laughs> yeah. uh get the podcast out there to more people and mm. the more people we listen the more potential patreon supporters we get and then the bigger and better content we can make it's good all around so if you have nice things to say please help us out and go rate and review the podcast um but with that this has been episode i don't remember what episode it was 140 140 apparently i messed up the numbers for the captain's log oh whoop earlier this week this is 139 okay Um, yeah so this has been number 139 of the whatnots review show we will see you all next week bye bye